Welcome to Lecture Online, and now we're going to look at some angles where the vertices are inside the circle but not at the center of the circle and also not at the edge of the circle. So how do we deal with finding angles in cases like that? Here's an example where maybe we want to find angle 1 or angle 2. We have the vertices of those two angles not at the center of the circle and we have of course the arcs from A to C and from B to D. So here let's work one of those examples out to get a feel for it and then we're going to show you there's actually a nice neat little formula that will make it a lot easier in the future. But first we want to see how we can do it without that formula and relying of course on what we call the inscribed angle formula. Well what we're doing here is let's draw a line from B to C like that and now notice that the line from B to A and the, by, the line from B to C make an angle here, let's call this angle 3, and that's the inscribed angle. Now we know that the measure of the inscribed angle is equal to the measure from A to C, from the arc from A to C. So let's say that this is 60 degrees over here, and let's say that this is 80 degrees, and now we have to find the measure for angle 1. So we can say that the measure for angle 3 is equal to 1 half the measure of the arc from A to C. So that would be the arc from A to C, like that. And that would be one half times the measure from A to C is 80 degrees, which is equal to 40 degrees. So let's go ahead and write it like that. Okay, now we can take a look here. Let's call this angle 4 right here. Angle 4, and of course we can see that angle 4 is the inscribed angle here for the arc from D to B. So we can say that the measure of angle 4 is equal to 1 half times the measure of this arc from uh, B to C, or from uh, D to B I should say, from D to B, which is equal to 1 half times 60 degrees, which is equal to 30 degrees. So now we have the measure for angle 3, and we have the measure for angle 4. Now we can find the measure for angle 5 because we know that this is a triangle and the sum of the angles of the triangle should add up to 180 degrees. So we can say that the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4 plus the measure of angle 5, and I forgot my M here, so there's my M, measure of angle 5, is equal to 180 degrees, which means that the measure of angle 5 is equal to 180 degrees minus the measure of angle 3 minus the measure of angle 4, which is equal to 180 degrees, minus the measure of angle 3 is equal to 40 degrees, and the measure of angle 4 is equal to 30 degrees, so that's equal to 110 degrees for the measure of angle 5. All right, now notice that angle 1 and angle 5 are supplementary angles. They must add up to 180 degrees. So we can say that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 5 add up to 180 degrees, which means that the measure of angle 1 is equal to 180 degrees minus the measure of angle 5, and of course that would be equal to 180 degrees minus 110 degrees, which is equal to 70 degrees. So finally we can say that the measure of angle 1 equals 70 degrees. Now notice that 70 degrees is exactly half the measure of arc B to D and the measure of arc A to C, or the average, I should say, not half, but would be the halfway value between the two. So if we add these two together, 80 plus 60, that's 140, and divide by 2, we get 70. Therefore, we can say, and of course it's not proving it, but the proof will be done later, we can say that the measure of angle 1 is equal to 1 half the quantity or the sum of the measure of the arc from A to C plus the measure of the arc from D to B. And so in this case we can say that this is equal to one half. The measure of A to C would be 80 degrees plus the measure from D to B would be 60 degrees. That would be one half of 140 degrees which is 70 degrees. Of course that's the same answer that we got over there. So that's a very easy way to do a problem like this. I want to show you that the two answers are the same, so you can see that that equation of that formula actually works. So for the future, we can see that if we have angles whose vertices are inside the circle but not at the center of the circle, we can then say that the angles here can then be found by simply taking the average value of the measures of the two arcs made by the angles, which also means that 
the measure of angle one must therefore be equal to the measure of angle two, and that's of course the case. These are opposite angles and therefore they must be the same as well. So there you go. That's how we find the angle of measure one when the angles, or I should say the measure of angle one, when the angles are have vertices inside the circle but not at the center of the circle. And that's how it's done.